that client that was spending $1,000 that wanted to cancel is now gonna spend $6,000 a month with us and she's not canceling. Meet Chris Montgomery, the founder of digital marketing agency, Social Ordeals. Chris is revolutionizing client retention with a strategy called his 100% no cancellation policy. It may seem unconventional, but this policy convinces clients to stay on and in fact spend more money with his agency. In this video, Chris is going to talk about this policy step by step and even walk through practical examples of it. And he's also going to talk about how the lead generation game has completely changed and why you as an agency owner need to be relying more on referrals as well as in-person interactions. And he's also going to talk about his step up program, a new department he's built dedicated to client upselling and why that's important for every agency owner to think about. Let's cut to the interview. Um, Chris, client retention is such a big problem among agencies, but you figured out um, a pretty interesting way to do it. You've got the ultimate guide to client retention and it's a no cancellation policy. How does this work? Yeah, so um, we've got a lot of clients. Um, and I don't leave that to my account managers to deal with those clients when they want to when they want to cancel. Normally, when somebody wants to cancel, it comes down to they don't understand what they're getting. They don't understand the the waters of the internet and how to navigate those. So if anybody in the company or any of my clients want to cancel, they've got to come through me before they cancel. And I don't care if they're spending a hundred dollars a month or they're spending fifty thousand dollars a month. They've got to come through me. Um, one thing that I do when I speak to customers, and I'll talk about one that I spoke to this morning, um, was a dentist in Toronto. Uh, she's been doing SEO for two years. Um, she's ranked probably 14th in locals. Her website's probably 20th. And she was like, I've been doing this for four years. I want to go with a local company. They understand S you know, my SEO market. I'm like, no, it's all about keywords. And at the end of the day, you're a dentist in Toronto. So how many dentists are around you within a mile radius? And she said 55. And I'm like, so think about that. Every dentist is trying to do exactly what you're trying to do. And so she's like, well, what's the answer? I'm like, there's several answers to that. One, we beef it up. We spend more money. So let's go out to some power boosts on the SEO so that we can really start buying you more backlinks. Let's get a blog on your website. And as I told her a blog on the website, I had the account manager on there and I said, Bree said, will you go ahead and write a, a blog about teeth whitening for her real quick? And while I'm talking to the dentist, Brisa's writing that three minutes later, Brisa came back, the blog's done. So now with AI and all these different things, there's so many things that these dentists don't realize that they can be doing without spending a ton of money. This client specifically was all about didn't want to spend a lot of money, right? Thought they could get it all spending a thousand dollars a month. Well, in Toronto, being a dentist, you're not going to do that. So I'm giving her a program where now she beefs up her SEO and then we dive into digital advertising. So that client that wanted to cancel now is going to spend 3000 in digital advertising, another 700 a month in, in SEO. And I told her she needs to put a chat bot on her website and we're going to start writing blogs for her. So that client that was spending $1,000 that wanted to cancel is now going to spend 6000 a month with us um, and she's not canceling. Okay, so, so break, the, break this down for us. Uh, customer becomes unhappy. They're presumably uh, messaging the, your account manager. Yes. Right? Okay, how does this get all escalated so that it, it comes to you? And, and what are the principles of, of, of retaining uh, these, these customers? How do you make sure they don't fall through? Yeah, so normally, you know, when somebody is talking about canceling or asking their contract dates is a red flag. As soon as that happens, I'm notified. It goes on a list for me. And then the client, well, the client success manager, the account manager will turn around and schedule a, an appointment with me, but they don't go in saying that we're going to get on and talk about the account. They get on with the client and they say, Hey, listen, let's schedule a call with Chris to go through the cancellation process. That way, most of the time they won't want to jump on with somebody to talk about their account because they're stuck because they've got somebody else in their ear trying to sell them on their services. So talking about them, we want to make it a smooth transition on, on cancellation. They get on with me and I start talking about the account. I talk about the cancellation process, but as I'm doing that, I'm analyzing the account and pointing out all the good things in the account and where I see opportunity for them. Okay, okay. Let's say I'm a small business owner. Uh, I've got SEO, digital advertising, reputation management with you. I'm not, I'm not seeing the results. Um, what, what could you possibly say to me to, to want me to keep my account? Well, first, you know, I would analyze your Google Analytics. Like most customers that are doing SEO, all they're worried about is where they're ranked. 
That's not the, the factors I look at when I look at SEO being a success. It's not about rankings. I go into their Google Analytics and try to figure out how many new customers have actually come to their website. And this particular customer that I was speaking about earlier, this is dentist in Toronto, she's up 42% in new users to her website. Business isn't up 42%. So then I go back to the client and just tell them, hey, listen, um, we are, um, when we look at your, your analytics and we're seeing you're up there, then we're driving good traffic. So the common denominator is probably your website. So that's a good opportunity for us to maybe take a look at your website and find out why it's not converting. Let's maybe put a chat bot on your website to try to get the, the clients that we know we're in a world today that people don't like to communicate. They're all on their phones. So let's give those people an option to be able to go through that chat bot to turn around and help you. But let's also define what your goals are at the end of the day. Who's answering the phone calls at your office? Why isn't your, your digital ad successful? Tell me that. I'm spending so much money on Facebook. I'm just not seeing uh, the, the, the results coming in. Well, let's switch it over to Google search then. You know, when we look at Facebook, a lot of people want to go with a promotion on Facebook because they think they're going to drive traffic. But with Facebook, imagine this. You're out fishing. So you and I go to the lake today and you tell me the fish are here and I'm telling you they're over here. Well, that's kind of what Facebook advertisement is. You're throwing out a promotion, hoping that you hook somebody on seeing your image. But when you go to Google search, all of a sudden you're sitting on a diving board. The fish are jumping out of the water because they're searching for you as you're baiting your hook. So let's, I think we should switch it over to Google AdWords and get the people that are actually searching for your services. Okay, so switch within different solutions if there's a problem within that component of the marketing strategy. Yes. Okay, so Chris, if we, if we break this down, there's, there's quite a process here, right? And, and I don't think many agencies have this. So you've got an account manager, and the moment a customer calls and they're talking about their contract, they're talking about their renewals, you get notified straight away. Yes. Okay, then you yourself are sitting down with the team and running the analysis on the account? Normally, I don't even run an analysis on the account. Like I, I, I'll get on with the customer a few minutes after they want to cancel and I strictly pull up the Vendasta platform and we've got Google Analytics and everything connected in there. Most customers that want to cancel, all they see is social posts happening on their social media feeds if you're doing a full package. They're, they don't understand citation building. They don't understand the importance of syncing their listings. They don't, so we go through that whole process with them to let them understand. Okay, and so during these conversations, um, some of the principles you're, you're applying are um, uh, uh, you're, you're running the analysis in front of them and you're being very solutions oriented and uh, perhaps understanding of why this isn't working and hey, let's try this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And, and so out of those cancellations that start with my account manager, we save about 90% of them when they come to me. And normally, probably 60% of them triple on what they're spending with us because at the end of the day, they were initially sold on a package because the sales rep wanted to get a sale in the door. Following up and finding upsell opportunities usually doesn't happen in the agency because everybody's busy. So once you start explaining to customers what they actually need in that vulnerable moment that they want to cancel and whoever else is in their ear trying to pitch them, then, you know, and you offer a solution and you can talk intelligently about the success or what it can do for them, then they usually want to stay where they're at. Okay. So use the technology to find out where they're at, where yep. the problems are, and propose the alternative solutions. You're not only retaining them, you're actually, turns out, you're growing that book of business. Yes. Okay. Wow. So Chris, since last time we spoke, um, AI has become a, a, a huge trend, a huge thematic. How are you implementing AI and automations, not only to uh, make your agency more efficient, but uh, to the benefit of uh, local clients and local businesses as well? We're using every aspect that Vendasta throws at us for AI. It's scary because it's it, from the last 18 months, it's so far advanced, it's hard to keep up. But Vendasta's done such a wonderful job in integrating in areas that make our, it's easy for our team to execute review responses, to be able to execute social media posts and things of that nature. Um, it's making my team more efficient. Um, they're not, there's no mistakes being made on review responses. There's no mistakes being made on, on social posting. So we've integrated all of that. And I know there's some new products that are coming out that I'm really excited about as far as having a plug and going to your website with blogs. I think AI is going to change the makeup of agencies. I think it comes down to instead of having a ton of account managers, you're now going to have managers that are going to manage AI to be able to make sure everything's flowing smoothly and putting the commands in of what you want it to do. Okay. All right.
Um, Chris, can I ask about, we, we did speak about retention, um, and I'm just wondering since 2022, has the acquisition game changed at all? Uh, we're hearing, uh, you know, a lot of agencies drop uh, comments on our YouTube channel saying, oh, oh, cold email, cold calling, that just doesn't work anymore. Are you seeing um, new ways, uh, new innovations as far as client acquisition and, and changing how you approach sourcing leads goes. Yeah, you know, recently in the last couple of years, we, we've always been partnership based, finding good partnerships like, you know, Chamber of Commerce, things like that that can filter leads. Um, we actually tried, you know, I've tried everything, cold calling to you name it, and that stuff doesn't work anymore. We actually did a 10,000 mail piece campaign and didn't get a zero lead from it because people, and I asked dentists like, do you get that mail? And they're like, no, no, front desk throws that away, right, and we get it. So. Traditional, traditional advertising doesn't work. Um, you know, what you've ultimately got to be able to do is start looking internally. Like, how do, how do you take your current client, they've got multiple businesses most likely, or they've got friends with businesses. So start offering incentives as far as um, a referral fee um, where they can get a month free on their services by referring one of their friends. They love you, so they're going to pass you on to friends and family. Um, we're also, over this next year, we've kind of changed our focus where we're not only going after new customers with um, our partnerships, but we're also doing upsells. We're now realizing that our book of business has grown so large that we didn't have a team going after upsells and our account managers were busy with their daily tasks with the clients. Nobody's looking for upsell opportunities. So I've now started a whole new department in my company strictly for upsells where they go analyze accounts, they look for opportunities, websites, are they advertising? What are they doing with us? How can we bring more business from them in-house, they meet with the account manager, set up a meeting, and then we have an upsell call with the client, and that's been very successful. Okay, can, can you break that down for us? What are the conditions to identify an upsell opportunity, and you know, how do you kind of um, increase that, that basket size? Yeah, so you're gonna analyze their Google Analytics, see what kind of traffic they have, see what kind of market they're in, are there opportunities, are there a lot of competitors in that market? Is their website up to speed? Is it a good website? Do they have a chatbot on their website? Because nowadays I think everybody needs to have a chatbot on their website. So we look for opportunities like that, maybe find one. And then when we're in the call with the customer, we're talking about that specific product, but we're also analyzing the customer and asking them questions about what are your goals this year? Um, what kind of budget do you have to, to reach those goals? And then we tailor a program for them. Okay, and with the referrals, can you break down, what does the referral program look like? Who, who's doing the referrals? What, what, what are some of the incentives? Like, yeah, if you can so, be specific. You know, our, our average package in the States is roughly about $400 a month for like, we call it our social plus package. Um, if a client refers them in, we'll give them a free month. So they'll get a $400 credit towards their bill by referring somebody in that, that signs. Okay, so is that the new way to generate new business? I, I think I've, I've always used it, um, just because I had one lady um, that was a dentist referring 17 businesses and they all closed. So she got almost a year and a half of free service with us because everybody's you know conscious about money today. So if they can find ways to have their friends and family benefit from what they're doing, um, then they're gonna take that opportunity. Okay, so you've got the benefit of you know, no, no, having clients like that and they're providing referrals. What about a newer agency who's starting out today or started in recent years? They don't have much of a book of business. They're not established. Clients perhaps don't wanna refer them just yet. What, what do they do to get customers? I just spoke to somebody in Vegas the other day, a small agency, and when I told him, he was struggling. I said, you know what? Pick out 20 businesses a day in your local area, print out a snapshot, and just go drop them off with your business card. And he's, he's turned around and in this first week, he booked five appointments to do, a, to do a presentation with them on the program and he ended up selling two of them. Okay, still gotta have boots on the ground. A hundred percent. So Chris, what is the step up strategy? You know, we've got what's called a step up program. And I've got a client that was spending $6,000 a month in Google Ads and it's an HVAC company. And you know, I had a new advertising guy come into our company, a new employee, and he was analyzing the accounts and he's like, this account's doing great. Can we get on the phone with the client? And I'm like, absolutely. So we get the client on the phone. He's like, how's business? He's like, July looked great from our numbers. He's like, historic month, 900,000 in business in July. He's like, what do you spend? How are you getting that business? He's like, well, I spend 6,000 with you guys. And I spend another 20,000 on direct mail. And he's like, and he's like, and he's like well, what about you know, adding budget? And he was like, well, we're getting to the end of the, the summer months. And, and my, ad, my ad person said, well, 
with historically with global warming, summer's extending into October. And he's like, well, what's your plan? He's like, I, it's a step up plan. He's like, okay, so what's the step up plan? We instantly double your budget right now. Next month, we double it again. And when we get into November, we're at about 35,000 a month so that we can compete with everybody else that's dropping out because they think the, the months are over, we'll continue rolling you forward into that. And the client was like, okay, let's do it. So you're just stepping the client up. If you see success in a client, don't just be satisfied with that. That's your opportunity to make sure that you're utilizing some of that ROI that you're giving them to be able to help build your agency and build up the products and services they have. Okay, so what are the, if, uh, for other agencies who want to do this, what's the preconditions of identifying a step, uh, a client with a step up opportunity? So in that example there, it was the potential of uh, competing businesses reducing their spending and that's why you encourage them to increase their budget. How do you identify this stuff? Google Analytics, you tr try to figure out what kind of traffic they have going there. Go to Google My Business, find out you know their growth there. Look at their SEO keywords that we're tracking in the system and see if you see growth there. And then have a conversation with a client. You're really not gonna know the success of a client until you get on the phone with them and have, a, have that conversation of where they're at. You can see points of like they're up 40% and new visitors to their website. How is that converting into traffic for them? And, and normally they'll be pretty upfront with you and be like, hey, things are great. So just communication to your client. All right, thank you so much, Chris. Yep.